Hi, welcome to the second video in my series on how we go about solving inequalities where we're dealing with inequalities that are fractional and in the fraction you've got a function of x that's in the bottom of the fraction. Now I did this question in the previous video in this series but I did it by a method that used graphs and what I want to show you here is how we do it without drawing any graph. It's not a method that I generally use but uh, nonetheless it does work. And when you get inequalities like this that involve a fraction and you've got some function of x in the fraction sometimes you'll notice that uh, textbooks don't say the values of x that uh, it's restricted for because you can't divide by zero so in this particular example x cannot equal zero so do remember that if they don't mention that do check that out okay so I'm just going to add that here so how do we go about solving this by this method where we don't draw graphs well we don't remove the fraction at all in this method. What we do is we just subtract the fraction, in this case 3 over x, from both sides. And so therefore we get x minus 2 minus 3 over x is less than 0. So whatever we have, we just bring it across to one side and make it less than or greater than 0. Now we put it over a common denominator okay and in this case that common denominator would be x we multiply through by x so we're going to get x squared minus 2x minus 3 and that's less than 0 okay I didn't multiply both sides by x remember we don't know about x it could be a negative value it could be a positive value all I'm doing is just keeping it like this, putting it all over the one common denominator. Now, what I'm going to look for is critical values. Critical values, values where the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction would equal zero. Now, I know that with this quadratic expression on the top, I can factorize it, which would help in finding those critical values. It factorizes to x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 1. And that's divided then by x, and that's less than 0. So for those critical values, let's just write critical values in. So for those critical values, we're looking for where the top and the bottom equal 0. So if this didn't factorize, I could have used the quadratic formula. But it did factorize, and I can see that x would equal 3 or minus 1. So we've got x equals 3, x equals minus 1. They're the critical values where the top would equal 0. And for the bottom to equal 0, it would just be simply x equaling 0. So we've got our critical values then. Now, what I do is I form a number line. A number line with those critical values on. So we've got, to the far left, we've got minus 1. Then we've got 0. Then we've got 3, and there we go. Okay, so I've got now 1, 2, 3, 4 regions on this number line. It's not drawn to scale, that doesn't uh, matter. It's just that I create these regions. Now, what we do, okay, let's just extend these lines down here. It'll give us some space to work in. What I do is I look at this region here the values of x that are less than minus 1. So if we pick a number less than minus 1, then we just put it into this equation here, and we would see that if we put a number less than minus 1 in, I don't know, well, we could have, say, minus 2, say, leave it up to you to choose a value less than minus 1, but can you see that this bracket here would be a negative value? So that bracket would be a negative value. 
this one, like if I chose x to be minus 2, this would be minus 1, a negative value. Okay, and then we're dividing it by a negative value. That's if x is less than minus 1. Now, what is a minus times a minus? Well, it's a plus value. Divided by a negative value is going to be overall a negative value. It's going to be less than 0. Now we do exactly the same by taking a value of x between minus 1 and 0. I don't know, you can take anything, say minus a half. And if I put that into the top here, minus a half minus 3, well that would be minus 3 and a half, a negative value. Minus a half plus 1, well that's going to be a positive value. And we're dividing it by minus a half, a negative value. But check it out with any value between minus 1 and 0, you're still going to get this result. And this result is a minus times a positive value on the top is going to give negative, divided by a negative value, negative divided by negative is positive, a value greater than 0. And we carry this through now, we take a value of x between 0 and 3, leave it up to you to take any value, put it through here, the first bracket is going to be negative, Okay, I'm testing with say x is 1. This bracket will be positive. And then we're dividing by, and a value between 0 and 3 means that the denominator here, that x value, is going to be positive. Negative times positive is negative. Divided by positive is negative. So it's a value less than 0. Finally, take any value greater than 3. Put it in the first bracket and you're going to get a positive value. Put it in the second bracket, you're going to get a positive value. Divide that by x. x is a value greater than 3, so it's positive. So what do we got? Positive over positive is positive, so greater than 0. So we can see that from the table, I'll just write that in, from the table, we're looking for where this function, this inequality if you like, x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 1 over x is less than 0. And you can see that it's going to be for values of x that are less than minus 1. x is less than minus 1 because we've got it coming out at less than 0. It's not in this interval between minus 1 and 0, but it is in this interval between 0 and 3. So we could say, or x lies in the interval between 0 and 3. And it's not in this interval. This gives greater than 0 values. So, there's a method. As I said earlier, it's not a method that I prefer, but you might prefer it. You might even be taught this method. But... Uh, another way of solving inequalities like this where we just create the fraction we do not multiply out this fraction we don't get rid of the x okay from the denominator here purely because it could be a negative value and it would mean that we would need to reverse that sign all right so uh, hope that's been of some use to you